Damn it, Jim! I'm a druid, not a physicist! Welcome to the Purple Lit Nerd Podcast for June the 2nd, 2018. I am your host, the amazingly adorable Rebecca Thistle, podcasting to you live-ish from my kitchen slash dining room table in my apartment, which I call Jeffrey Thistlework. Yes! And see, I was supposed to have an audience for this show. I was all excited, and my audience seems to have disappeared. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Anyway, so um, before I get into this, I have to do it because I know how nerds are. I know how nerds are. I'm I'm not like this, but I know how nerds are. Fucking spoiler alert, okay? (laughs) If you have not read The Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn, or if you're, like, still stuck at the beginning of the series, first of all, go do it. Just, oh my gosh, it is the best book series in the world. Or in my opinion, anyways. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you like you can argue with me about that, and, and it's it's all a matter of opinion, and I and I concede that. But yes, the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn. Go out and read it. Better yet, go check it out on audio because Luke Daniels. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I love him. I love him. He's he is so. Oh my gosh, he's like the greatest narrator I've ever heard. Maybe with the exception of Jim Dale, but, you know, I'm, oh, Luke Daniels, oh my gosh, my favorite, my favorite, and I will beat anybody with my stick if they want to argue with me on that point. I will beat them. (laughs) Like, I'll cut a bitch. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways. So, yeah, so, uh, go check it out. Spoilers. I'm going to be talking about it. Uh, So, Trapped this week. Well, actually... I'm talking about a couple of books this week because if you will recall from last week, Tricked, which I think I misspelled it in the title of the show because my K key on my keyboard is being wonky and weird. Anyways, um, not the point. The point is, is if you'll recall at the end of uh, Tricked, Atticus with the weird twisted help of Coyote (laughs) manages to set things up so that he can train Granuel for the next 12 years to become a druid. So, 12 years to become a druid. Okay? That's like going to school. Except not. Well, I mean, it is, but it's not. But it is. But anyways, the point is, is so there's this huge 12-year gap between the end of Tricked and the beginning of Trapped. Now, in between Tricked and Trapped, there is a novella called Two Ravens and One Crow. And a few things happen in that novella. First of all, Atticus has an epic adventure because anywhere Atticus goes, shenanigans follow. And it is epically exciting and dangerous and hilarious. (laughs) But, um... First of all, first and foremost, he uh, is visited by the Morrigan, who I I don't think I mentioned this in the show, but at the end of Tricked, his um, one of his druidic tattoos, specifically the one that has the binding that allows him to heal himself, uh, gets damaged, and the only person that can help him repair that is the Morrigan. And so, um, I am acutely aware that somebody is listening to me right now. (laughs) And I'm trying to pretend like he's not. Um, but, uh, the Morrigan is the only 
person capable of repairing that tattoo because she's the only one that knows. So, six years into Granny Whale's training, we have two ravens and one crow, and the crow, the Morrigan, comes and says, all right, Atticus, I'm going to repair your tattoo. So she repairs his tattoo, hilarity ensues, and then they shift to Oslo, Norway, where they meet with Odin and Frick. And Atticus is profoundly upset about this because he he's not too happy with the Norse and the Norse aren't too happy with him. But um, what ends up transpiring uh, over dinner, you know, it's like a parlay, is um, most importantly of all is that Odin and Atticus come to an agreement that since Atticus was key, I guess you could say, in the actual murder of Thor, because Atticus was the one that that gathered all these people and shifted them into Asgard, um, that Atticus owes the Norse a blood debt. And so part of that blood debt is he now has to go out and do basically everything that Thor was going to do during Ragnarok because all the prophecies about Ragnarok if you will recall from from Hammered all the prophecies from Ragnarok are now null and void because Atticus killed the Norns and so and then he facilitated the death of Thor which means Ragnarok is just completely up in the air and so they decide okay you fight on our side we're not going to try and kill you we're going to hope that you get killed in the process but we're not going to do it ourselves And Atticus goes, one of those options, you know, let you kill me now or fight for you in Ragnarok. Uh, One of those options has a better chance of me surviving. So I'll fight in Ragnarok. And then the other thing is that he has to um, return uh, Odin's nifty, schmifty, nido schmido spear, um, Gutnir. I have such a hard time with all those Norse names, so I am so sorry if you're, like, gung-ho about Norse theology and and stories like that, and I am mispronouncing every fucking thing. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, so there's that, that that's the most important thing that transpires over dinner. The kind of secondary interesting thing that happens is that uh, Atticus shares how he learn the herb lore of Ermit and thus has been able to keep himself looking about 21 or 22 years old for 21 centuries and then at the end of dinner uh, somebody attempts to assassinate him epic battle, epic battle lots of fun fights and, and otters falling from the sky and shit like that and turns out it's fucking Freya who has escaped the Frost Giants, if you'll recall from Hammered, uh, the Frost Giants kidnapped Freya because they're all gung-ho about her. And so she has escaped their captivity or whatever and is now hell-bent on killing Atticus and taking revenge because he's the one that recruited the Frost Giants and used her as collateral. This is very key, very, very key. And this is one of the things that I just go, I love you, Atticus. I love you, Sheehan. But no, 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 no. So that's two ravens and one crow. As some scores get settled with the Norse and then some scores don't get settled with the Norse but get set on the back burner. Okay, so Trapped starts six years after that novella. And it starts out in true Iron Druid fashion. Pandemonium. (laughs) Utter and complete chaos. Uh, Atticus is uh, hiking around the Kaibab Plateau. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Uh, trying to find a place where he can start the binding ritual so that Granuel can become a full druid. When the elemental contacts him and says, hey, something weird is going on. There's this god, or there's this 
other plane is burning to the ground, like burning out of existence, and one of the gods from the plane wants to contact you, and Atticus is like, oh shit, which god? It turns out to be Perun, my favorite thunder god ever. Just real quick side note, like last night we got a little bit of thunder and lightning, and... <laughs> I was out on my balcony taking pictures. If you follow me on social media, you probably saw them. I was out on my balcony taking pictures. And, and like, I'd, I'd miss I'd miss an opportunity to get that really cool lightning. And so I, you know, and so I, I'd, like, pause and I'd say, Well done, Perun! Well done, Perun! And I'd be sitting there, like, golf claps and stuff. And then next thing I knew, there'd be another chance. And it seemed like the more that I gave praise to Perun and his awesome thunder and lightning, the more thunder and lightning he gave me. And it was more epic and more beautiful and more wonderful. And I was like, yes. It's nice to think that that's real. So. (laughs) Anyway, so Perun... um, Being uh, Atticus's ally, I guess you could say. Um, Atticus goes, yeah, tell Perun where I am. I'll see what I can do to help. And turns out Perun is being attacked by dun, 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 dramatic reverb. Loki! Oh, Loki! That crap, crazy Loki, who's just lost his, oh my gosh. But he's hilarious. You know, Another, like, side note that has, like, nothing to do with anything. In my head, when I listen to the, the books, the, like, Loki looks like Conan O'Brien. Because he's really tall and skinny and got that fiery hair. I'm just, like, in my head, like, I just... Yeah, because, you know, you, I, I, like, if you know Conan O'Brien, he kind of gets these crazy eyes every once in a while. Yeah, that's how I imagine Loki. So, end side note. <laughs> so, Loki's, a, like... Uh, chasing Perun and and uh, Atticus talks some smack to Loki and then Perun Atticus, Granuel, and Oberon all shift away to Tirnodog and then shift to some random place in some random countryside where they discuss like oh shit Ragnarok's about to happen oh my god oh my god you know and sort of discuss well while they're discussing this they get approached by a fairy and Atticus is not happy about this because everybody in Tirnanog is supposed to have known except for the Morgan that he fucking died 12 years ago so how do they know that he's alive who gave him away so but he gets summoned to the fey court so they they all go to the fey court and It takes a few chapters, but it's well worth it because it is, like, really exciting and really tense and really dramatic and hilarious because Oberon commentary. Awesome. (laughs) But while at the Fae Court, Briad basically gets pissy with Atticus because he's not dead. Uh, the Morrigan shows up and crashes the party and scares the shit out of Briad, but really is just there to kind of do a power play, um, but, and, and hand over, uh, Fragara, uh, Atticus's favorite sword in the world, back to Monin and McLear, who's the other, uh, psychopomp god of death in the, um, Celtic pantheon. So... She hands over Fragara to, to Monin McLear, and shortly thereafter, that's when Atticus says, yes, I'm trying to bind my apprentice so you guys will have another druid who doesn't annoy the ever-loving shit out of you. And ostensibly, they all go, hooray, new druid! But in the meantime, he finds out he cannot bind Granuil anywhere except in Europe. Except here's the thing is all the all the shift points from Tirnanog to Europe are completely like down except fucking except 
for the ones at Mount Olympus.